All right guys, so in a not too long ago previous video I did, I went over my best um, truck survival knives and talked about eight kind of setup or maybe it was in Pacific Northwest knives too. Um, but I've ultimately dug into and talked about this whole um, kind of setup for a uh, survival knife. And once again, this is my current truck survival knife um, and how it's set up. And this is basically my go-to wilderness survival knife as well. And I'll go over it briefly to kind of help cement the point. But of course we have the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. This one's in CPM S35 VN, much to the dismay of some people, but a really good admirable survival knife. Of course, wrapped around this sheath, we have a lot of nylon webbing. That is of course to make a thigh wrap, of course, it locks in here or you take all this webbing out and it goes into here so you can wrap this around your thigh or make a thigh strap so that your knife isn't just wiggling around loose in the wind. Of course, I have tons of extra paracord that is fed through the entirety of the sheath to give me lots of cordage options for making lashings or creating things, whatever I need to do with paracord. And then I also have a very bright um, or blaze orange uh, handled ferrocerium rod right here, just tucked away. And of course this is locked onto the sheath, but I usually just keep it tucked away so that once again, it's not dangling in the wind. Um, and then of course, lastly, in the point of this video, we have a multi-tool right in a little multi-tool sheath right here. So get the sheath there, pull it out, and you have a good old fashioned Leatherman Surge. This is actually not the old fashioned, I should say, this is the actually new fashioned Leatherman Surge. And this one is definitely seen some use, but it is a very admirable survival complementary tool. And today we're going to be talking about why you typically see multi-tools on all of my survival knife builds. So typically when you guys look, you will notice invariably that I have a lot of survival knot or a lot of my survival like knife kits, um, you know, things like my truck survival knife kind of setup here all have multi-tools to them. And why is it that they have multi-tools over things like dedicated tools? Now I will say this is semi straightforward answer and a lot of it really does come down to the multifunctionality of the tool itself and I, I would say how it functions in complementary terms to my knife. Now typically speaking when I recommend a solid like go to three set of survival tools, I will usually say like a hatchet or an ax, depending on where I'm going and what I'm trying to do. Typically a hatchet fixes or solves most problems in this regard. So almost always a hatchet, but a hatchet or an ax, a saw and a knife. And what the multi-tool allows to do is really combine a lot of those tools into a small package. Now obviously it's not an ax, it's not a hatchet, but the ax and hatchet uh, kind of um, spot or place can be bypassed in regards to most situations. Now, invariably, if I have a choice, I really do love having a hatchet. And there's a lot of situations where I would actually prefer a hatchet over a knife, um, especially if it's something like my grandfather's wildlife hatchet, where it's super compact, but yet very sharp, and it has an, a very high bevel. So it can do things very easily like feather sticking and notching. But at the same time too, it is a legitimate hatchet. So collecting firewood is very easy for it. You know, collecting small um, pieces of wood for shelter building is also very easy. I've in the past shown videos and you know, pictures of building whole shelters with just a baco or sorry, a um, silky gomboy and a wildlife hatchet. So you can legitimately build shelters with quite small pocket carryable uh, tools, such as a you know, hatchet and a small pocket saw or folding saw. However, it's not always tenable to have a hatchet or a saw. And in a lot of cases, what I will typically go for to complement a knife and its capabilities, especially if you go with a larger survival knife, like let's say something like a Cold Steel SRK. When you have something like a Cold Steel SRK, you can use this once again to baton through pieces of wood to work with kindling. Of course, your blade will make feather sticks very easily. In addition to this too, you can also, um, especially with a lot of the sized pieces of wood that you're gonna be using for um, you know, making shelters, you can bend them physically, like bend them physically and either hit them, you know, chop them with your knife, or what I prefer to do is get a baton, make a nice baton and use your knife 
to baton through the piece of tree or piece of wood. So if you have a larger, let's say, little more than wrist thick tree, you can bend it over and baton your way through that piece of wood or sorry tree and fell it that way and this is something that i've once again not only shown on this channel but also a very proven tactic and so this is something that i typically recommend and how i would use my survival knife and why i can kind of bypass that axe hatchet roll because a lot of the same pieces of wood that i would be felling or same trees that i'd be felling with a axe hatchet um, i could also fell through batoning with a knife. Now, where the nice thing or the, the nicety of the multi-tool comes into play is that we still have things like saws. Now, granted, this is not huge, but you can create notches. You can do a lot of really good work, even with a smaller saw like this. You're not gonna be, once again, felling trees or bucking trees with this, but that's where you go with a knife that you can baton more readily because you can buck and fell trees with a knife fairly easily once you have baton and you can you know baton through them. So there there is that, but also too, there's a lot of MacGyvering that can be done with multi-tools. Of course, plier-based multi-tools will always have the win in that, especially if you're anywhere where there is a reasonable degree of human um, trash or discard or waste, you can usually take these knives or knives, these multi-tools with their pliers, fabricate things like traps, fabricate things like stoves, fabricate many things like metal that you ultimately can't do with you know, a knife with a hatchet, with a saw. They don't have the plier head to them, so you can't really work them the same way. In addition to, there's a lot of solutions that require screws. And once again, these knives, saws, hatchets, aren't really designed to screw things in. So you do have a good amount of craft ability with these types of uh, tools in the multi-tool and moreover you can make more specialized versions as i have done with my other surge you can make more specialized versions where you can convert certain tools in here like let's say a flathead screwdriver into a chisel that you can use to chisel in plain wood so that increases your functionality when it comes to carving once again say make a figure four deadfall trap for trapping um, or even other styles of traps or if you are looking to you know increase the structural integrity of a piece of wood you can notch it using the saw and say you know like you make say you're trying to make a square notch you know you cut your two sides with your saw and then use your chisel that you you know modified and added to your multi-tool to knock out that middle portion of wood so with a lot of wood crafting specific things you can actually bypass needing a full-size saw and ultimately still get a lot of work done with something like a Leatherman Surge. Um, in addition to, it's also worth noting, it, some multi-tools like the Surge, and unfortunately pretty much only the Surge, um, are compatible with a T-shank adapter. So if I can get this guy out real quick, I'll show you. They do not like to make this one very easy, but um, So you can see here that this is compatible with a T-shank. And so this is a T-shank adapter ultimately. And so you can even put in even larger saw blades than this. Of course, they won't close as it's naturally supposed to or intended to close, but it will actually still close uh, or it will lock out in the locked out position. And so you can have a larger, more serviceable saw blade on this particular um, multi-tools. So that's what I really prefer about the Surge as a whole, but also multi-tools have a ton of versatility for crafting, not only specifically with wood, but also, especially as I said, with refuse, that's like tin cans, aluminum cans, um, even like ammo cans. Like you will genuinely be surprised if you spend enough time in the woods. Of course, you know, each wilderness situation varies. It depends if you're going to a place that's truly uninhabited or has not had any human interaction, it might work a little bit differently but you'd be surprised how even in the backwoods of Alaska, you know, you're still finding ammo cans, tin cans, things that you can use to, once again, make things like stoves. You can make things, um, you, know, you can uh, retrofit things to be, you know, water catchment devices. You can do so much with um, 
refuse and waste that a multi-tool can do really well. And so ultimately I would say a multi-tool is more versatile and better than something like just having a saw or just having a hatchet. And so effectively um, in many situations, not necessarily um, is it going to be the best, once again, not saying you should bypass having a hatchet and a saw, but if you have a competent wilderness survival knife and a competent wilderness survival multi-tool, you can bypass the need for the hatchet and the saw by using these two uh, tools in tandem to do a lot of really good work. So for me, this is not an always hard and fast rule. Uh, once again, if I have my pure preference, I want a really capable, you know, wilderness survival knife and, you know, a really good wilderness survival hatchet and saw. But in certain situations, you can bypass that. Now, when it comes to a truck survival kit or kind of truck survival list, I do have an ax in my truck. I do have a folding saw in my truck and I do have a full on knife. And the reason why is in a truck, you're not limited to space or weight, or I should say as limited to space and weight, you know, a survival ax or an, a survival saw isn't really going to, you know, um, weigh you down if you're, you know, in a truck per se. So it's not necessarily, you know, the, the hugest issue if you are, you know, doing a truck based survival kit, but um, looking at an individual like survival item like this knife, it's nice to incorporate a multi-tool because it gives you just that much more usability in your actual survival situation. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something new. As always, God bless and I'm out.